C15, otherwise known as pentadecanoic acid, has been in the aging news a lot lately. And that's in part because of studies like this, where it was shown that it shares clinically relevant cell-based activities with leading longevity enhancing compounds. And also studies like this, where pentadecanoic acid deficiency has been associated with accelerated aging associated diseases. But more specifically, is this fatty acid, this saturated fatty acid, C15, is it a good measure of aging? So let's start off with the bad news. C15, or pentadecanoic acid, is not associated with a younger epigenetic age. And that's what we'll see here. So on the left, we've got levels of saturated fatty acids. So C15 is a saturated fatty acid as it doesn't have any double bonds with C15 indicated there. So FA150 is C15 or pentadecanoic acid. And their levels are plotted against two gold standard epigenetic clocks, phenoage and grimage. And then we're looking at the age acceleration. So this is how is your epigenetic age relative to your chronological age? If it's higher than your chronological age, that's a positive age acceleration. If it's lower than your chronological age, that's a negative age acceleration. That's actually what we want. We want to have a lower epigenetic age relative to our chronological age. All right, so in terms of what's significant, we put up a red line at zero. So when the 95% confidence interval, that's the horizontal line to the left and right of the black circles, if that's completely to the left of the red line or completely to the right of the red line, we have a significant association. And for C15, unfortunately, for both epigenetic aging clocks, the 95% confidence interval overlaps with that red line. In other words, C15 is not associated with a younger epigenetic age, at least based on these two gold standard epigenetic clocks. So while we're on this page, what is significantly associated with a younger epigenetic age? And we can see two other saturated fatty acids, C22 and C24, which are significantly associated with a younger phenoage. Now, the importance of these two fatty acids is that peanut intake can increase their plasma levels. Now, it's important to note that whether in this study that their levels are being influenced by peanut intake or it's just a, maybe it's a genetic marker where people who had uh, relatively higher plasma levels have a better ability to make these uh, fatty acids in blood. Intake isn't the only way that we can increase their levels in plasma. They can also be made endogenously. Which way that story goes, I'm not sure, but at least these two long chain saturated fatty acids are associated with a younger uh, DNA methylation uh, phenoage, a DNA methylation clock for phenoage. Now, the good news though is that CE15, so C15, the, the 15, C15 fatty acid, pentadecanoic acid, when that's bound to cholesterol, which is known as a cholesterol ester, so CE150, that is significantly associated with a younger epigenetic age. And that's what we'll see here. So at the top, we've got the CE, so that's cholesterol esters. And then we're interested in the CE15, so the cholesterol ester that contains pentadecanoic acid. On the left, we've got levels of DNA and phenoage. So this is the epigenetic clock, again, that applies to phenoage. And then Grimage, also an epigenetic clock. So we're looking for CE15. So for that, we go to, to, to the carbon chain length. We highlight 15. So now we've got CE15. And then in terms of double bonds, pentadecanoic acid has no double bonds. So we highlight the zero for no double bonds. And then at that space, we can see that there's a blue dot. Blue dots in this case indicate that CE15 is significantly associated with a younger DNA methylation age relative to chronological age. So this is good news. CE15 is significantly associated with a younger epigenetic age based on phenoage. And that story is also true for Grimage, as we can see that CE15, not again, not C15, is significantly associated with a younger Grimage. So from both of these epigen epigenetic clocks, we can see that the cholesterol ester containing C15 or pentadecanoic acid is significantly associated with a younger epigenetic age. Again, to highlight, not the fatty acid on its own, but when that fatty acid is bound to the cholesterol, cholesterol ester, that is significantly associated with a younger epigenetic age based on phenoage and grim age. Now, the good news is that CE15 can be tracked, which means it can be potentially optimized. So with that in mind, I've been using at-home metabolomics using ILO's kit, which includes CE15, but also 600 other, 600 plus other metabolites 
many of which I've covered on the channel. And if you've missed any of those videos, I'll link to it in the right corner. If you want to measure CE15 or any of those metabolites on your own, there's a discount link in the video's description. All right, so what's my data? That's what we'll see here. These are levels of the CE, again, cholesterol ester containing the pentadecanoic acid, C15, from 2023 to 2024, as I have 11 tests over that span. So in 2023, over five tests, average CE15 was 7.7 .7 micromolar, which then raises the question, what's optimal? Now, when considering that relatively higher levels of the CE15 are associated with a younger epigenetic age, at worst, I want to avoid an age-related decline. Now, how high it should be, I don't know. And if anybody's come across papers where CE15 is associated with how it's associated with aging or all-cause mortality risk, please post it in the comments as I've yet to see that data being published. All right, so 2024 data. How well have I resisted an age-related change within that relatively short time span? So over six tests, average CE15-0 is 6.8 micromolar which is definitely going in the wrong direction. But the good news, at least based on a two sample t-test, is that these two groups of data, 2023 versus 2024, are not significantly different as the p-value is greater than 0.05. Nonetheless, the goal is not to have it go in the wrong direction and experience any age-related decline. So at worst, I wanna keep it at least stable or increase it slightly if I can. So the next test, test number 13, I'm waiting on results for test number 12, which was sent on September 6th. Test number th 13 uh, just happened a few days ago. So uh, those results take about a month to come in. So expect an update on this story at some point, probably in December. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that can, you can use to test yourself while also helping to support the channel including at-home metabolomics, Ulta lab tests, which is where I get the majority of my non-metabolomic and epigenetic tests done, epigenetic testing, NAD quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB, but also Grimage as shown in the video, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.